Welcome to Interbike 2014, Road Bike Review and MTBR.com's uh, coverage of the show day one. We've got our whole crew here and we're going to get right to some of the cool new products we saw coming out for 2014. We're going to start with Jason, uh, our Road Bike Review guy. He's going to tell us about some crashed Lycra. <laughs> yeah, uh, really cool jersey. It's called the Scott RC Pro Tech Kit. And, um, it's essentially, it's, you know, a road looking jersey, but it's got protection on the um, shoulders and on the hips where you're going to crash if you go down, you're racing a criterium, you go down a corner, that's where you usually get road rash. And uh, looking at the notes here, it's got carbon fabric impregnated in the material. And it really, it's an amazing demonstration. We'll actually go to kick you to some video here of, of this stuff in action, but taking a hand sander to the material and nothing happens. But yeah, really impressive stuff uh, from Scott, and I, I think a lot of people don't know that Scott is, uh, you know, they know him for bikes here, but man, they do everything. Uh, Francis and I were just over at their Switzerland office, and they've got mind-boggling stuff. Uh, mountain road, triathlon, everything. And, clothing. Uh, clothing, mm -hmm. shoes, uh, helmets, everything. Yeah, really, really uh, a brand that's on the move in the U.S. So. so that jersey, it's 125 jersey, 145 for the chamois, available in December, full run of sizes. And that is the Scott RC Protect jersey. Very cool. Uh, now, Jason, you also uh, picked up Fit Sticks. Now, we've yes. we've featured these on MTBR before. A cool, really simple tool. What have they done to update Fit Sticks? Right. So the original Fit Sticks, the you basically had these two pieces here, a bit on each end. So you had four bits, and those bits were fixed. It was a little bit lighter before, um, but you just had the four bits. Now, dropping it. These come out, so it's a little more modular. And when you buy one, you get all these bits too. So you get eight eight bits in this, and it's you know it's sort of the alternative to um, to carrying a multi-tool in your pack or in your uh, saddlebag if you're out on the road, or you know, and obviously something you can use in your garage too. And and 35 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. And it's got you know a Torx 25 and full run of uh, of uh, Allen wrench sizes. So yeah, that's a little, little toy. Really good point is that there's. Uh, a lot of fasteners on the bike now that are Torx, and uh, we see a lot of people out on the trail that are still just carrying Allen wrenches, and, and they're kind of out of luck uh, sometimes if they don't have those And just bits. easier to get, you know, you know, sometimes yeah. when you're trying to get to those certain bolts and you're using a multi-tool and it's just, yeah, it doesn't work very well. So. Yeah, I get some good leverage of that one. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually a tool you can use. In uh, the shop. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, and then finally on Jason's list, we've got the, uh, uh, Moot's got a new gravel bike out, right? right? Adventure right. bike, what are, we, what are we calling this? So what? it's the Moot's Route 45 route is a reference to Route County. Steamboat Colorado is where Moot's is located in Route County. And uh, it's a gravel adventure bike, but to me, it's, it's not so much that this bike is really special, but it's sort of the trend that it represents, which is these do-it-all bikes. And so you could take this bike, you could race cross on it, it's disc equipped, so it's sort of keeping up with that trend, disc brakes, road bikes. Um, but you can also throw, they told me, it'll go up to a 45 millimeter tire. So you can, wow. you know, you can basically go do light duty single track on it. So um, <laughs> some people might think, all right, I got to get another bike. But in a lot of ways, this could be a do-it-all bike. And you could just have a bunch of wheel sets and a bunch of tires in your garage and just have a, a bike like this. It doesn't have to be the Moots. Moots obviously makes really beautiful custom titanium bikes, but there's all kinds of people. Yeah, I, I think it's really an interesting trend. Uh, you know, we're seeing all the manufacturers come out with gravel bikes, adventure bikes, whatever you want to call them. A lot of them disc equipped. In fact, uh, over at Eurobike, we saw the giant Defy SL, which is the lightest frame set that they've ever made. Right. And it's a an adventure bike. It's not their road race bike, which is a little heavier because it's an aero road bike. So sure. really interesting that the so-called gravel bike is, is faster than uh, the the bike that their their pro team is riding so uh, really interesting stuff and exciting time mm -hmm. so we're gonna go to Chris Gross right now who uh, I think she visited the Giro booth first and was this before or after Mr. T was there <laughs> it was just before in fact we were wondering where he was yeah okay I think we got a photo of it but Mr. <laughs> T was there with uh, Taylor Finney uh, BMC pro rider who's recovering from an injury right now but uh, and doing rather well but he and Mr. T were at the booth uh, promoting <laughs> shoes. Uh, but what did you see there, Chris? Uh, one thing that caught my eye a little bit off to the side on a mannequin was um, a new set of bibs for women. Um, and the 
defining feature of these bibs is that it has a, a halter on the top, so if you're a woman and you're out on a road ride, then or even a mountain bike ride, then you know that um, a nature brake is obviously a little bit more cumbersome than if you're a male. So this eliminates the need to actually remove your jersey, if it's a full zip that is, so you can just unzip, over, take care of business, and get on your way. So I was really excited about that. I, I, I think that it. might work for some men too. I'm, Maybe. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, okay, so that that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's new from Jiro and their women's line. What's it mm -hmm. called? I didn't even catch it. It was like a, it was an afterthought that they just they're like, oh, you should check out these bibs, and then I, they had to go because Mr. T. So. Okay, maybe we can we can take yeah, we can we can take care of that with a CG. Um, <laughs> And Pac, uh, the protection company, uh, you went to see them, what'd you see there? Yeah, I had a great um, first visit this morning with Pac. I spent some time in their booth learning about um, the new uh, VPD air pads that are coming out for the crowd that's not so gravity oriented. The way that they put it was um, people who might not normally wear pads might wear these ones. And, and I agree, actually, they're really low profile. Um, they were light, they were soft. Um, and then they have, of course, the VPD technology, so soft and mold malleable. And then if an impact should occur, they become much more rigid. And That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. and what we're seeing that a lot, too. That seems to be a trend, right, Francis? Absolutely. The uh, lightweight protection. That mm -hmm. is the trend. Uh, when you have big plastic robot-looking things, yeah. you end up not wearing it. You know, when you're, you're riding four hours, a lot of climbing. But these things are just a step above arm armors yeah. in, in terms of uh, heat and, and comfort. So. And good good, wear good breathability them. too. They talk about that. Yeah, I had it on for a little bit, and I yeah. mean, in the booth, it's hard to really tell. If, sure. But um, oh, they had awesome. elbow and they had knee, um, a full set of sizing, so you could get a really tailored fit. Um, yeah, they're coming out in March. In March, sweet. Yeah, we uh, we saw a few people who could have used those at the outdoor demo <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Um, it's like falling on a coral reef out there at Bootleg yeah. Canyon. Um, there's no, and it's loose. There's no good fall there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, loose. I saw definitely some candidates. You see them here. You see them here walking around. Yeah, yeah. the walking wounded. Yeah. Okay, and and what else did you see from from Pac? Um, they also had, and it's not new, but it was I'd never noticed before. But I guess this is a growing trend. A um, a backpack that also had the VPD protection. So I mean, all, a lot of us who are out riding on the trails, we're carrying a hydro pack anyway. And this one comes with a back protector built in, so it eliminates the need to have a back protector and then try and figure out how to put your hydro pack on top of it. Um, and on top of that, the backpack was really good looking. It's just simple black, it goes with everything. Um, and it had some other great features like a helmet, um, a helmet strap, and uh, I forget what. what armor carry? Um, no, they didn't have an armor carry. Oh. But they would go great with your low profile VPG there air. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, uh, I think Greg went out to press camp and, and saw Camelback. Camelback has the uh, Kudu, yeah. Yeah. which is uh, armor protected with hydration pack. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think a lot of the companies, uh, uh, Evoc is doing one and Dionysi is doing one, and I think they're really targeting Enduro for that, so they would have uh, that armor carry. It's interesting right. that this right. one might not, but Maybe so we'll I take a look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the, um, the European companies are interesting, Pac and Dionysi, because they actually have to pass tests. Right. And that's something these guys brag about. Is there's there's very specific tests where they, they stab you basically in the shoulder blades. Mm. So you'll see, you'll see the, um, uh, the the European companies are, are yeah. <laughs> stab proof. Stab that's, yeah. Important. Yeah. that's important. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll see that the protection and the shapes are. That's what I'll wear in your neighborhood. Ab right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Stabbed in the back. So we hear a lot of rumors here at uh, Interbike, and and some of them are true. Some of them are not true. This one, uh, we talked to the source himself, Chris Chance, the founder of uh, legendary East Coast brand. Fat Chance uh, says he's bringing the com company back, or trying to. And uh, we actually have an interview with him, and uh, we're going to do a separate story on that that you'll see on MTBR this week. Pretty exciting news. But uh, also, uh, Ellsworth, uh, Greg Cato has some news on Ellsworth. What's yeah, I had there? a chance to talk to uh, Tony Ellsworth today about uh, his company being bought out by a company called BS2 Nanocarbon. And he's really excited. It brings new resources to him so he can focus again on the design part of his company. And it also means that there'll be handmade carbon fiber mountain bikes in California, in the US again. So wow. we're really Exciting looking forward news. to that. Yeah. Coming in 2015, he'll have production moved over here. Awesome. 
Um, all right, uh, aside from industry news, uh, you got to see a really cool bike. Jeff Jones, he's this guy that does, we know him for the crazy handlebars. Um, or, sorry, crazy cool, don't send any letters. Um, <laughs> what's going on with, uh, with his new bike? Yeah, I was really surprised to see Jeff Jones. Did any of you guys get to go down to, they call it the lab? No. It's a, the area downstairs behind the, um, the registration area, and there's a bunch of smaller companies down there. And uh, Jeff was down there showing us his new 29 plus bike. And uh, he's really excited. And uh, it's got some really interesting geometry. He talks about how easy it is to wheelie and manual and all this stuff that I can't do. Um, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of new products, some new handlebars too. Um, carbon handlebar, um, new H bar. And he's also got some uh, headsets and some other cool new stuff. And then we'll have features on those. Cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't even know what 29 plus is. Um, it's sort of a somewhere in between a fat bike and a 29er. So right, so three it's two inch wide another wheel size. Yeah, it's more <laughs> just what we need. Three inches. Yeah, exactly. I asked him if he'd ridden a Surly Krampus, and then he seemed a, a little hurt because he had actually worked on them way before Surly ever had. So. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so some really exciting news uh you know we've heard about it we've we've run stories on xtr's new electronic shifting uh di2 uh for uh mountain bikes they've had it on the roadside for a couple years now and now it's coming to mountain bikes francis actually had a chance to ride it one of the first editors in the u.s what'd you think of it absolutely had two rides on it one one in north carolina and one here in the desert and on on the one side it's uh, i rode the two by ten two by eleven they have 1x11 and 3x11, but I rode the, the sweet spot one. And what was most intriguing was I just used the right shifter. I never used the left shifter, which is my style of riding. Uh, it was as simple as it needed to be. And yeah. the, the, the jumps, the, the, the shifts were crisp, and the, and the jumps were e evenly spaced. So yeah. it was impressive. Yeah, I, uh, I had a chance to talk to Joe Lawwell, uh, the marketing manager for Shimano XDR out in the desert and, and he did a demo that we've got some footage of. Uh, really incredible, the bike they had set up there didn't even have uh, a shifter on the left hand, it just had the sequence program to go into the next logical gear. So um, you could be shifting along and then you hear this little chime and it actually shifts the front shifter and the rear shifter at the same time, but it feels seamless. Right. Like uh, you couldn't do this mechanically yourself. Um, also interesting, they had XTR mechanical and XTR electronic DI2 next to each other and I never thought before that like pressing a button was really that much effort, but it's so much less on the electronic side. And Jason, you've had a lot of experience on the road, right? Yeah, I mean, just the lack of hand effort, or the amount, le lesser amount of hand effort required is really impressive. I did a cross race actually last weekend using Altegra DI2, which is the one step down on a cross bike, and you can just scrub so many gears so fast. You can transition from steep downhills to steep uphills really seamlessly does all the work for you. And, and you know, a cyclist don't have a lot of upper body strength, it's no secret, <laughs> so, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and they also say, I haven't done it yet, but they, in the mud, I've heard story after story after story of people, especially in cross races, a muddy event, where the mechanical shifting stuff has just stopped working, it's gotten gunked up, cables have gotten gunked up. These wires are all sealed, they don't get gunked up, and the stuff just keeps working, and that obviously could, you know, we try yeah. not to ride our bikes in the mud, because we're IMBA members, but, um, we do ride our mountain bikes in the mud and not having to worry about that kind of degradation of shifting. It's yeah, huge. well, and, and there's a lot of things that, and I, I think there's this perception that, oh, it's electronic, it, you know, what might go wrong, and, and they've thought of a lot of things. Uh, I think these servos that self-center it over your chain rings are amazing. I mean, it never goes out of uh, adjustment. It's I making know. us all better mechanics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe not me, but um, so anyway, uh, big news, and uh, we're going to be covering XTR quite a bit because it is a big story, and, and like everything else they come out with, it's going to make its way into a lot of things. Um, I don't think you have to run and, and hide because you're a mechanical Luddite. Um, you know, you have to have that. We're going to have mechanical for a long time. Uh, it's not going to go away anytime soon, uh, but we are going to see electronic from Shimano and other manufacturers really soon sure. on, a, on many levels. So. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it for today. We've got a lot to cover uh, tomorrow and a lot more uh, for you to see on mtbr.com and roadbikereview.com. So visit those sites and we'll, we'll see you here from Las Vegas tomorrow.